Hello, good morning and welcome to Morning Worship on this Sunday the 14th of February, St Valentine's Day. It's really lovely to be with you. If you don't know me already, I am a Ruth, I'm the Ordinand who is on a placement at St Luke's at the present moment. It's a real privilege for me to be able to bring this service to you today. So let's begin. Let us worship God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We say the opening prayer together. Lord, direct our thoughts and teach us to pray. Lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So we come to a time of confession. God, our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish, without thinking of you, Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say, Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us, Father, forgive us save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son, Father, forgive us, save us and help us. Amen. Let us give praise to the Lord. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song we will praise our God. Psalm 50 verses 1 to 6 The Lord the most mighty God has spoken and called the world from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion perfect in beauty God shines forth. Our God comes and will not keep silence. Consuming fire goes out before him, and a mighty tempest stirs about him. He calls the heaven above and the earth, that he may judge his people. Gather to me my faithful, who have sealed my covenant with sacrifice. Let the heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. As we prepare to listen to the Gospel reading, let us worship in God's presence by singing, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord.
The Gospel reading is taken from Mark chapter 9 verses 2 to 9. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is the day when many people will celebrate love. February 14th, as you will know, is Valentine's Day. The day when those in partnerships often give gifts and make each other feel extra special. They're sharing their intense feeling of deep affection for one another by setting aside the day to say, I love you. That kind of love is a true blessing. But the word love has also become less of a word. These days, it can be often used to describe an interest or pleasure in something, such as something I often say, I love those shoes. Or it might be you hear someone saying, he loves riding his bike. It can even be reduced down to a simple love heart emoji in a text or via social media. But there is a love that is far beyond what we could ever be capable of expressing. A love so unconditional and infinite, it's hard to imagine. That love is the love of God. This love is heard throughout the Bible, but in particular in our gospel reading today. The love that bears witness to God's love for his son, but also for us. God says... This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. We have heard that on the mountain, Peter, James and John were witnesses to the amazing transfiguration of Jesus. He was seen to shine with glory and honour, which testified to who he was and is. We heard that Moses was there representing the laws of God and Elijah representing the prophets then God himself was heard affirming that Jesus was the one that had been foretold, God's son in human form. His son put on this earth to live among us and bear the greatest sacrifice for our sins by dying on the cross. Such unconditional and sacrificial love. For Peter, James and John to be witnesses to this is significant. Earlier on in Mark's Gospel, we read that Jesus had been asking his disciples who people were saying he was. And then he told them of his death and resurrection to come. Difficult words to hear as one of the followers. And indeed, Peter found this hard to accept. But having witnessed Christ's transfiguration and heard God's words, the truth was now fully known. This experience clearly had a great impact on those present, and particularly Peter, because he wrote about it. This can be found in 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 17 to 18. Peter wrote, When a voice came to him from the majestic glory, saying, this is my son whom I love. With him 
I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice that came from heaven when we were with him on the sacred mountain. Those presents knew what they had been a witness to and left that mountain knowing that there were difficult times to come. But by being faithful to Jesus, they also knew that his love would guide them through. On that mountain, God not only expressed his love for Jesus and affirmed who he was, but he also gave authority to the teachings of Jesus. He said, listen to him. Listen to what he has said and done and what he will say and do. Jesus stepped down from that mountain and continued to teach all those who would listen and demonstrated God's love and his compassion through his words and actions to all that he met. There are many stories recorded in the Gospels of him healing the sick, blessing the children, fighting against injustices, feeding the hungry, helping those in despair to find peace. I'm sure you can think of many of your own too. So if we are to be Christ-like in our lives and do as God said, listen to him, then our actions and words should be mirroring those of Jesus. And on this day, where more people focus on love, perhaps we should look to Christ's example Love is not about what we get, but about what we give. Love is about kindness and humility and an open heart. I believe over this past year, in particular, we have seen such love in the darkest of times. Sacrificial love for one another, from family members staying apart to keep their loved ones safe, even though we want to, all we want to do is hug and hold them tight. To care workers moving into care homes to keep their residents safe. Or the compassion of the doctors and nurses being at the bedside and holding the hands of those who are dying. The list goes on and on. So as we head into the season of Lent this week, let's take time to remember the greatest love of all, God becoming flesh, living on this earth and dying on the cross for us. Unconditional, sacrificial and infinite love. This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. Amen.
So let us come together and affirm our faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's come to a time of prayer. Father, lengthen and deepen our attention span as we, your people, listen to your beloved Son, so that we do not fail to hear his will for us. Let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Father, with such humility you entered the world to save it through love's giving. Increase our desire to enter into one another's suffering and hardship and to share the world's resources fairly with one another. Let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Father, let us not take each other for granted, but wake each morning ready to notice Christ in each person we see and speak to, and find great joy in your hidden presence through all creation. Let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Father, in our prayer, we stand alongside all who are too weak to pray. May all who are suffering sensual love and comfort be given strength to persevere and peace of mind and spirit. Let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Father, we commend to your eternal presence those who have recently died that they may rest in peace and rise to eternal glory. Let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Father, thank you for always providing the encouragement and inspiration we need for the work you would have us do. Give us grace to trust your will for us and walk forwards boldly in your company. Amen. So let's collect together all our prayers. Almighty Father, whose Son was revealed in majesty before he suffered death upon the cross, give grace to perceive his glory, that we may be strengthened to suffer with him and be changed into his likeness, from glory to glory, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. And so we come to our final prayers. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We say together, blessing, honour and glory be yours, here and everywhere, now and for ever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining me in that worship today. We will of course be entering the season of Lent this week and there will be an online Lent service on Wednesday for Ash Wednesday. 
There will also be the Lent course starting on February the 25th, which is a Thursday evening. That will continue for consecutive Thursdays until the 18th of March. If you would like details for those events, then please do contact Reverend Dave. Again, thank you for joining me in worship today. Take care, stay safe. God bless.